Welcome to the Experimental Aircraft Channel. I'm Brian, and I'm back in Pensacola, Florida today to talk to Glenn Bradley and see his CX-5, uh, Thatcher Aircraft CX-5, coming up right now. Thank you to our channel sponsors, Wix Aircraft Supply, Aviation Youth Publication, and Aero Adventure Amphibious Seaplanes. And so we're here with Glenn Bradley in uh, Pensacola, Florida, uh, which is also home of home of Thatcher Aircraft, and he he built this plane. Um, this was the first prototype, I understand, for That's the right. CX-5. So he's going to give us a quick walk around of his personal aircraft that he had. Well, he, he, he built himself. So what year was this built or completed and about how many hours do you have on it so far? Uh, we test flew it, I test flew it, December, starting December of 2013. And then flew the first 40 hours off in about three months at another airport near here. Um, since then I've flown it uh, pretty consistently and I have 840 hours on it now. And uh, this is, of course, a scratch-built aircraft, so about how long did it take you all? Now, understand this is also the first one, so about how long did it take uh, to build uh, as a prototype? It took us about a year and a half, but as you say, it's a prototype, and we had to do some of the uh, designing as we went along. There are several things we designed and didn't like, and then went back and redid them completely. Um, we redid the seat especially the front seat to get a real nice comfortable ergonomic angle. And to redo the seat, you have to redo all kinds of stuff other than the seat. So that, you know, that took an extra month and a half right there just to redo the seat. So when you start doing a prototype, you, uh, you really greatly lengthen the, the time it takes to get everything done. Sure. Now, is, is this one of the first ones that are actually a tricycle gear or was the four available uh, as a tricycle gear? The four, the single place, was originally a tricycle gear and it flew that way for a lot of years. But Dave kept having more and more requests for a tricycle gear. And a lot of younger guys don't have or can't find uh, write-offs for tail draggers. So uh, he designed the tri-gear and put it on it. And at that point I started flying it. Uh, I'm a tail dragger guy, but I I came along and met Dave then and we got to be friends so I flew the four about uh, 200 hours while we built the CX-5 here and he decided that because of the market pressure so forth for tri-gear he'd stick with tri-gear all the way. Uh, one day I may convert this to a tail dragger. Uh, several guys are building it as a tail dragger. It's easy to do. Um, but I don't know if I'll ever have the time and it sure is a pleasure to fly as a tri-gear. So it couldn't be any better than it is. It's easy to land, it's easy to take off, it's not squirrely at all, it tracks straight. Uh, it's just a real easy, easy flying airplane. Okay, basically I uh, rotate uh, at 50 and I land at 50. That's way above stall. It stalls about 40, 42 in ground effect. But it's, it's real nice to make a nice smooth landing at about 50. Um, it cruises about 100 at economic cruise and you can push it a little bit and get 110, 115. Uh, I guess at altitude you probably could get more than that. On auto fuel you can use either auto fuel or 100 low lead. I like to use 70% auto fuel, uh, mostly non-ethanol, and 30% uh, 100 low lead for a little bit of lead in the, in the fuel to help the valves and all that. Uh, although this, this engine has hardened valves so you can burn anything you want in it, it'll do just fine. Um, I have had it to 10,000 feet, which is the light sport limit, and I still had 400 feet per minute rate of climb. And I was really surprised by that. I thought it would be much, much less than that at 10,000 feet. So, um, and that's with a Zenith carburetor that does not have mixture adjustments. So that was running full rich uh, all the way. Well, I chose, or Dave chose, a Revmaster uh, 2300, which is an 85 horse uh, VW based engine. It is no longer really a VW engine. It's been engineered way beyond the original VW type engines. The cylinders are different. Um, the hardening of the valves and all are different. Uh, it's just uh, far, far superior. Um, Joe, 
in the Repmaster uh, and his engineer Ralph, who's an incredible guy, genius, uh, developed this over the last 30 or so years. And um, he develops uh, dragsters and gets over 500 horsepower out of them. And he has streetcar engines the size that he gets 200 horsepower out of them. Wow. So he detuned it to 85 horse for the airplane and it's super, super uh, durable. Um, I understand they even ran it uh, before they started selling it with all the fins cut off of the cylinders and ran it full it wide open for hours and hours and hours and it, the cylinder head tent went up a little bit but not much and they even thought about marketing it that way but <laughs> Joe thought it would look odd without cylinders uh, fins. Uh, it has four electronic ignitions. Each ignition runs two coils. Each cylinder has a coil. I'm sorry, each plug has a coil. So if you lose a coil, you'll never know it. The other plug will have a co its own coil. If you lose an ignition system, you'll lose two plugs, but the plugs are not on the same cylinder, so you'll never know it until you do a mag check. I call it a mag check, but it's all electronic. So it's double, kind of a double redundancy. Um, it's an incredible system. Um, it's just really kind of a fail-safe, in, in a way, system. It has, uh, mine has a uh, mechanical fuel pump built in, which is what I fly on all the time. If it were to fail, I could switch on a, an electric pump and fly on that. So it's, uh, it's got two fuel pumps. It has two alternators, both uh, each are about 20 amps each. And um, you run, it's best to run on one at a time. And so I run on one alternator for a month and then I'll switch and run on the other alternator for a month. Uh, it's it's just incredible engine. Uh, cranks every time, summer, winter. You, mine has a Zenith carb, and you set it once, takes about 10 minutes, and you never set it again. I mean, I never have to touch it. It's just great. Runs every time, cranks every time. And you know roughly what that uh, platform with that weighs in at? You mean the engine? The engine itself? Yeah, I think it's about 185, 189. With all components? Yeah. Okay, uh, all accessories. The RevMaster site will tell you exactly, but I think that's about what it is. What do you what are you seeing for a fuel burn, both in uh, takeoff and kind of cruise, or I guess a mix of? I usually put around at 100 miles an hour and burn about four gallons an hour. Uh, if I push it, I, I burn five, okay. five, maybe five and a quarter, but that's really pushing it. And, and what kind of RPM are you? Are you the range of for cruise, and then what are you, your takeoff? What what is the RPM of this engine? Okay, I uh, cruise at 2,800 to 3,000, depending on what I want. And uh, takeoff RPM wide open is about 3,150, 32. Um, depending on the weather a little bit, uh, nice cold weather, it might be a little more than that. So I'd say about 32 is a good, uh, good mark and uh, cruise 2,800 to 3,000. Approximately, what did it cost to build? Well, I tell people you can build it for under 30,000 with the engine from the factory, factory run and dynode. That's everything, paint and everything. Um, that's with normal instrumentation, which for me is uh, uh, just regular round gauges, what people call steam gauges, and uh, a radio transponder and a DSB. I'd say under 30 would be easy to make. Uh, some people are good scroungers and good at finding bargains and they do it for way less than that. Uh, but I don't, I, I don't know what you would do to put more than 30 in one. You don't have a lot of room for a whole lot of dual stacks of radios and dual this and dual that. Uh, it's just a good basic VFR airplane. So, What do you, what do you think, uh, just to give perspective, just the airframe, the metalwork alone, um, like you know, plans built or even using some of the kit parts, what do you think the airframe itself might cost or a range? Well, I'd figure um, about nine for the engine and three or four for radios and accessories, maybe five. Uh, so I'd say it's about six for the airframe, five to six just for the airframe. The aluminum's cheap. And since you're making it all yourself, uh, there's not labor, you're not paying somebody else for the labor involved. Uh, where can people go to find you on, on your YouTube channel? Um, just, you can just YouTube, go to YouTube and search for Thatcher CX-5 and you'll find a couple of dozen videos. I, I had more than that, but I took some of them down. There were just too many, I thought. It turns out a lot of people like those. I wish I had them back. But uh, I've got videos of, of takeoffs and landings and short field and 
you know, taking off in the winter and 700 feet and uh, I have the flight to 10,000 feet on there and steep turns and stalls and all kinds of stuff. Um, even a tough test of the wing because I'm thinking about putting uh, uh, some BGs on it and seeing if that'll change the stall speed, although 42 for a stall is pretty hard to beat. And uh, I try to do the videos to be uh, a little bit entertaining as informative and keep the guys that are building these all over the world encouraged and, and show them that, man, once you get it finished and flying it, you're going to forget all those hours of building. It's going to be just a great thing. If this is your first time here, I'd like to invite you to subscribe right now and uh, hit, the, uh, hit the like button on this video and the bell notification for future videos. If you have already subscribed, thank you very much for helping me build this channel and to continue to reach more people about experimental light sport and ultralight aviation. I invite you to head over right now to wixaircraft.com to check out a variety of tools available to you right now to be able to build the aircraft. Check out Wix Aircraft also for all kinds of aviation related supplies that you may need for your, for your aircraft. And remember guys, just build it. I'll, I'll see you in the next episode.